Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're finally looking at the concept of split screen. So let's get started. So in other game engines you're able to just add a second camera and then that's it. However inside of Construct we don't have the ability to add multiple cameras. So we have to do a little bit of trickery. And the way we're going to do this is using something called the canvas object. Now the canvas object allows you to draw objects straight onto a canvas and then place the canvas somewhere on the screen. We're going to place the canvas on the right side of the screen. So you see the player on the left and then you see the canvas on the right. And then we're going to draw everything that player two is seeing at all times and put it on the canvas. This is a little bit complicated and can only be done with Construct Premium. So let's have a look at how it all works. So to start off, I've got player one, player two, and a simple background so we can keep track roughly where both players are. I'm going to start really, really simple by just going to my player and we're just going to add some behaviors just to allow for a little bit of movement. Now this can be done for a platform game. I'm going to go really simple and do the eight directions. Now it's really important, whoever player one is, you actually turn off default controls. If you think about how a keyboard laid out, the left side of the screen where player one is going to be, W, A, S, and D are present there. So we're going to remap player one to W, S, and D, and player two can have the arrow keys. I'm also just going to set the angle to no, just so it moves a little bit more smoothly. Next, I'm going to go to player two. I've already added the eight directions, and I'm going to leave default controls on. So that's our first bit set up. Now what we need to do is actually go down, I'm going to add something called a family. Now families are groups of objects that were able to apply the same bit of code to everything in a family. This is really important for setting up our split screen and this is why you can't really do this in the free version of Construct as easily. So we're going to add a new family and we're going to add everything to it. And this is going to say which objects do you want to appear on the opposite screen. Any object you miss off that will be invisible to player two. And we're just going to call this all objects because it contains all objects. Next, let's start looking at remapping our keys. So we're going to insert a new object, scroll down and add the keyboard. And if you've done this before, you might want to skip ahead a little bit. But essentially, all we're going to do is check if we're pressing a certain key and then move player one in that direction. So we'll start off really simple. Are we pressing the A key? If so, we're going to add an action to player one, simulate control and we're going to get to move left. I'm going to repeat this for the other directions. So now we can move on to adding our canvas. So we're just going to insert a new object and the canvas is quite far down the list. Drawing canvas, insert, and just click anywhere. Now we need to start by resizing our canvas to be the rough size that we want it to be. And this is just going to be probably half your viewport width size. Just roughly get that into position. And then what we need to do is actually change one setting on here, which is the origin point. So we're going to change this to center. Now this is going to quickly throw out where your image was, so just move it back into your viewport, just like so, and that's all set up. And now we're ready to move to our code. For our code, we need two variables. These both can be global variables. The first one is going to be called dx, and then we can just copy and paste that, and the second one's going to be called dy. Now these two variables are vital for moving the object onto player two screen, putting them onto our canvas, and then moving them back to player one screen. So for our events, we actually only need one event, but we need quite a few actions to go with it. And it's just going to be every tick. Now the first action that we're going to add is on our drawing canvas. And we're just going to start by just clearing the canvas, so removing everything from it. This just means that we draw what we need to. Then the next tick, we remove it and then we start again. So we don't get lots and lots of overlapping images. Next, we're going to set those DX and DY variables up. So we're just going to set the value and we'll start with DX. I'm going to start with player 2. It's important you get this the right way around. We're just going to take the x position of player 2 and minus it from the x position of player 1. We're then just going to copy and paste this line of code and this time change dy and change player 2's y position and player 1 to y position as well. Now ready to teleport our objects onto player 2's side of the screen. So we're going to add an action. It's going to be on all objects scroll down and set position. 
So we'll start off with the X and what we're going to do is take all objects and take their X position. We're then going to minus that DX value from it and then we're going to add in the viewport width. Now for the viewport width we need to specify the layer. We're just going to pick layer 0, it's the only one that we've got. And what's really important is then we divide this value by 2 because we have two halves of the screen. One for player 1, one half for player 2. For the Y we're going to do all objects dot Y and we're going to minus DY. Now we don't need to worry about splitting the viewport width in half because we're only splitting it on the horizontal, not on the vertical. So we can hit done. We're then going to add an action. We go to our drawing canvas, and now that our objects are in position, we can now paste them onto our canvas. So paste all objects with effects and hit done. Now let's play two sides up. We now need to go back and make sure that player one has everything on their side of the screen now. So we're going to start by moving our objects back. So we're just going to scroll down. We're going to go to set position. And this time what we're going to do is take all objects X position. But now we're going to add DX to it. And instead minus the viewport width. And again, when you do your viewport width, we just need to put the layer, which is zero. And we still need to divide it by two. On the other end, we're going to do all objects dot Y and we're going to add the DX value. Next, we just need to add a couple more actions. So we're going to go to our drawing canvas and we're going to scroll down and we're going to set its position. This is going to take in player one, X position. And we're just going to add in the viewport width once again, selecting layer zero and dividing that by two for the two different screens. And on this side, we're just going to do player one dot Y. Finally, we just need to make sure that the camera follows player one around the screen. Now the canvas will jump to where player two is every single tick and draw what player two is seeing. However, there's nothing set up to see what player one is seeing. So to fix this, we're just going to go to system, scroll down, and we're going to scroll to position. And we're going to do the same thing we've just done. So player one dot X plus viewport width. And remember to put your zero in the bracket. And instead of dividing by two, which is what we've done so far during this tutorial, this actually simulates how scroll to works. And it would actually put the player in the middle of the screen. We don't want the player in the screen. We want them close to the left hand side of the screen. We're going to divide this by four, which puts the player in the middle of the left hand side of the screen instead of just in the middle of the screen completely. We don't need to worry about anything for the Y. So we're just going to do player one dot Y. Final thing before we test this is we're going to go to layout one and we're just going to move our canvas to a brand new layer. If we don't do this, if we add any new objects now, they'll actually fit on top of our canvas, which makes no sense. So we're just going to go to our world and we're going to insert layer above and we're just going to call this canvas. We're then just going to click on our canvas and move it to the canvas layer. Now let's do our test. Now you see that we've got our two players that can move around, they can move away from each other. However, there is one problem that you should be aware about at this stage. So if I move my player one all the way to the end of the screen, my other player goes off the screen. And this effect continues if we move to the top of the screen. And this is a bit of a bug on how we've set up our canvas. Our canvas is working based on where the player is in the world. However, once the player starts to get close to leaving the world, our canvas starts to leave the world with it. Now, I've looked at lots of split screen tutorials and no one I found has got a good solution to this that fixes it. However, there is a cheesy solution that we're going to employ today. So this is another world that I sort of created when I was first testing this and all I've done is I've put walls around the map. Now I've done lots of calculations to work out how big these walls should be. So the wall on the left hand side needs to be a quarter of your viewport width. So if you're using standard contract sizes this would be 213.5 as the width but again you can work this out by just looking at your viewport width size. So in this case mine is 854 and then just clicking on your wall and you can actually do that calculation straight in here. So 854 divided by four. Your height needs to be half the viewport height on top and bottom. And then on the right hand side needs to be three quarters of your viewport width. These look quite large and might put you off a little bit, but again, you can still make quite a large game and not even notice those walls are there. So 
it's just about changing those walls to be something like black so you feel like you're just reached the end of the screen or part of the terrain but it will stop that canvas being able to move what i've done is i've took this concept a little bit further so what i've done is i've added some coins that spawn randomly and i've used the random function to place them inside the walls if either player touches them it will destroy them and then what i've also done is added a little bit of scoreboard on the top here that displays the score another thing that i've added is the hud layer and i've changed the parallax to zero by zero this means it stays in place and this means that I can actually add in a line to break up the two players' screens. So if we look at this example here, exact same example that we've looked at already today. However, now we've got a screen in the middle to sort of divide the two players' attention. And we've got the ability now to pick up coins and to get a scoreboard going. As you can tell from this video, I'm not as confident with split screen as I am with other parts of Construct. But I want to make sure there was a tutorial out there that you could follow, that you could work on and start building your own split screen games. This code will also be available in the description if you want to try it out for yourself. If you're not too confident with making a split screen game but you just want to try one out, maybe adapt this one, please go ahead and let me know what other ideas you have for construct videos. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.